Hey everyone, this week it's post-processing and we're going to be using Darktable to edit a raw photograph. So I've known about Darktable for quite a long time and I've heard really good things about it, but I've never actually tried it. So I thought I'd finally give it a go and see where it's like for editing raw images. So what is Darktable? In the company's own words, it's a open source photography workflow application and raw developer. And in practice that means it will edit raw images and it's also a management tool to organize your photos in a library system basically a little bit like Lightroom if you're familiar with that so I should point out that this is not a sponsored video it's not a promotion in any way I'm not affiliated with Darktable I just thought I'd try it out and talk through my first impressions of the software so I'm going to edit a raw image now let's jump in and see how the application performs so when you first open Darktable you'll be presented with a view similar to this. So this is the catalogue area, the library if you like. They call this light table. If you're familiar with Lightroom, it's what would be called the library. And you'll see along the top, we have some similar tabs. Darkroom here is the equivalent of develop in Lightroom. And you've got some others here, such as print, map for geotagging, things like that. So you can import here. You can look at collections, you can give star ratings, you've got tagging and geotagging and things like that. But like I said, I'm not gonna go into this in detail. What I really wanna look at is Darkroom. So I'm gonna to go to this image here, which I captured at Kings Canyon in California. I can either click on Darkroom up here or just double click this image and that will open up in Darkroom. This is the raw image out of camera, but it has already had some modules applied to it. And modules are these things here on the right hand side. So we've got different collections of modules. We've got this here, which is a quick access panel. We've got this one, which will show the active modules. So like I said, it has had some applied and I'll go through those in a moment. Then we've got technical modules, grading and effects. So I'm gonna come back over here to active modules you'll see we've got one called Filmic RGB. And basically that is a, it, it tries to reproduce the color and tone of classic film basically. It'll try and look at the shadows and highlights and then optimize those for the dynamic range of the display that you're looking at. So I'm not gonna change anything in there, but it's a good base to work from. If I just turn that off, you can see what it's doing adds a bit of richness to the blacks, brings down the highlights a bit. So we've got exposure. That does what it says on the tin basically, the same as Lightroom, you can adjust the exposure. I'm gonna leave it where it is right now. And I'm gonna start with white balance. So I'm gonna bring up the temperature to make it warmer to around about there. Then I'm gonna adjust the tint. So the interesting thing with this is that it works in the opposite way to Lightroom. So in Lightroom, you would go to the right to make the image more purple. You'd go to the left to make it more green. Here you can see it's working in the opposite way. And by going to the left, we've got purple. And it is very sensitive, so you don't wanna move it too much. I'm gonna bring it slightly to the left just to get a little bit of purple into my scene. But like I said, I don't want to overdo it, so I'm going to bring it to about there. Now I'm going to close that. You can close these just by clicking on them again. And I'm going to go to the next tab along, which is technical. And I'm going to come down to haze removal. So this works similar to dehaze in Lightroom. I want to get rid of some of this haze over the mountains just to bring a little bit of clarity and detail back. So I'm going to bring up the strength here about plus 34 and then you can play around with the distance it's just how far into the scene that effect is applied so I think that looks fine and that's all I'm going to use in this little panel here so I'm going to go to the next tab along which is grading and I will choose shadows and highlights so here we can really start to begin to play with the tone in our image and we've got some settings already applied, but I'm actually just going to 
bring that down a little bit with the shadows. The highlights I'm going to bring quite far down to around about there. I'll leave white point adjustment, but I am going to adjust the radius. Bring it to the left and we get this effect. More to the right and we start to get more definition in the image. So I'm going to bring it to around about there, I think. Okay, that's all I'm going to adjust there. I'll close that one up. Next, I'm going to use the graduated density module. So this is similar to the linear gradient selective tool in Lightroom. So with that one, if you wanted to darken your sky, you would draw out a line vertically from top to bottom. And the top part of your image would take on the effects that you change and the bottom part of your image would remain unaffected. And at first I thought this tool worked in the same way, i.e. if I did this, going vertically from top to bottom, and then applied some effects, it would apply those effects to the top of the image but not the bottom. But as you can see, that hasn't happened. And that's because this actually works horizontally. So if I put this line horizontally over my horizon, like that, Anything above that line will take the effects of the sliders I adjust down here and anything below it will not have that effect basically. And there'll be a gradation from having the effect to not having the effect depending on how we adjust this hardness slider here. So if that's very hard, there'll be a sharp cut off between top and bottom and bringing it to the left will soften that difference. So I'm going to bring it to around about 50%, somewhere in the middle. And the density is how dark or light that area will be. So I'm going to adjust it to around about there. And what we can also do here is change the hue and saturation. So that's the color basically. So you've got to bring your saturation up first or you won't see any effect. But if I bring that up, you'll see the sky now goes red. So I can adjust the hue to whatever I want it to be. I'm gonna bring it to around about there because I want a kind of orangey sky. That's way too strong. So I'm just gonna dial back the saturation to around about there. And that's looking more natural now, but still has some of that nice color in the sky. I can close that one up. And now I'm gonna come up to Velvia. This is quite a nice effect. It seems to add saturation and maybe some contrast. I'm not 100% sure, but it does add what we like to call pop. So it makes the image pop. It's a technical term. So you can play around with the mid-tone bias as well. I find if I bring that back down, it has a more saturated look and I think that's a bit too unnatural. So I'm gonna bring that back up and close that one up. And I do find that in general, this is a bit oversaturated now. So what I'm gonna click on next is the color balance RGB. So that's here. And we've got saturation grade in here. So if I just bring down the saturation in the mid tones, so around about there, I think that's okay. And maybe the saturation in the shadows as well, not as much. So around about there. You can turn any of these on or off by clicking the little button up in the top left of the module. So that's off. And then we can turn that back on and you can see just a little bit less saturated now. Okay, so next I'm gonna to go to color zones. So I want to make the trees down here at the bottom a little bit less green. It's just not really fitting in with what I've got in mind for this image. So what we can do is click the little eyedropper tool here, click on a green color, and then we can adjust that color by moving around this little point here. So if we go up here, you'll see that becomes more green. If we come down here, 
it's becoming a little bit more well that's going more red that's too much but if I bring it to around about here it's a bit more yellowy orange and that looks okay to me I think so I'll close that one up and the final change I'm going to make to the colour is by clicking on the split tone in here and what I'm going to do is change the hue of the shadows to a more blue colour so I'm going to bring that up to around about there and I'll change the hue of the highlights to around about there because I want those to be slightly yellowish but that's not looking quite right so I need to change the balance so if I just bring that more more to the right I think that's starting to look more like what I want now and again we can turn that off if we want to look at what it was like before and that's what it looks like now so next we can go to this panel here which is effects and the first thing I'm going to do is come down to retouch here because I've noticed I've got an absolutely filthy sensor on my camera and I've got all these nasty dust spots such as this one here and we can get rid of those using the retouch module so I'll click on that we've got a little tool here which is circle you've got different ones like ellipse or you can use paths and brushes I'm just going to use this circle and if I use the scroll function on my mouse I can scroll up to make that bigger scroll down to make it smaller and what I want to do is adjust that inner circle to a round about well just slightly bigger than my dust spot and then by clicking shift on my keyboard and then scrolling up and down I can adjust that outer circle and that defines how much feathering how soft the area around that inner circle is going to be so I'm just going to bring it down to about there click on that spot and then I drag this circle to a place where I want to clone from and if I just close that up that's not looking quite right actually so I'm going to have to adjust that go back into retouch it might be that I have to make that inner circle a bit bigger maybe the outer circle a bit smaller let's have a look at that yeah that looks a lot better now so if I just turn retouch on and off you see there's the spot turn it back on and it's gone and I do have a few more of these but I'm not going to bore you with getting rid of all of them and so the next and last tool that I'm going to use is vignetting so I always like a nice vignette it works a little bit differently to Lightroom we've got scale here where we can change the size of this circle which defines where our vignette is going to be we've got fall off strength which is basically like feathering and then we've got tools to darken or lighten that vignette and saturation which I'm not going to change but it will obviously change the saturation and then we can change the shape of the area defining that vignette so I'm just going to squash that up a little bit I'm going to change the fall off strength just to favor it a little bit and change the brightness just so it's not too strong but just adds a little bit of a darkening around the image to draw our eye into the scene and what is quite nice just to get a more accurate look at the image is to come down to this little light bulb here so toggle ISO 12646 color assessment conditions and that will put this white frame around it and we can just assess what that looks like for on screen or printing and I think that's looking fairly nice I could perhaps just bring up the exposure touch but that's more or less ready to export so I haven't figured out how to toggle off all of the settings all at once like you can do in Lightroom but what you can do is come to history here and we can then come back all the way to 
original, for example, and see what that looked like to start with and what it looks like now. And then if I want to, I can come down here to export, to export that image out. So I can't believe I haven't used this software before. It's incredibly capable, it's a genuine replacement for Lightroom, and it's completely free. So one thing I didn't talk about in the editing section there is that the software does include selective masking tools. So like Lightroom, you can choose separate areas of your image to edit those separately from the global edits. And that's incredibly powerful. It works a little bit differently to Lightroom and it's a little bit more complicated, but once you get your head around it, it is very, very powerful and it just further reinforces how good this software is, given that it's free. It's not without its drawbacks. I did find sometimes that the processing of the effects is sometimes a little bit slow. So you'll see at the bottom of the screen it says waiting while it's trying to apply those effects and that can be a little bit frustrating. It's not a deal breaker, but it's certainly not as fast as Lightroom and you don't always see those effects happening in real time. The other thing is that it can be quite overwhelming for beginners. There's a lot to get your head around in this software and once you do, it's great and it works brilliantly. I think some people would say that it's actually better than Lightroom and it has more features. But if you do want something very simple and something you can just jump into straight away and get using, Lightroom might be easier for that. And also, I'm not 100% sure about this one because I haven't had time to fully explore the software, but I don't think there are any automated or AI selective tools, so sky selection or subject selection. I think you have to do all that manually, but I might be wrong. Uh, if you know the answer to that, just put it in the comments below. But overall, considering this is free to download, free to use, it's a phenomenal piece of software. And I'm kind of tied in to using Adobe because I use a lot of the other packages in their suite of applications. But if I only needed a raw image editor and management tool for my images, I would absolutely get rid of Adobe and just use Darktable, it's that good. So I do recommend checking it out. So that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. If you have found it useful or you've liked it in any way, just give me a thumbs up down below. That'd really help out. And if you're new to the channel, you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can also click down there on the big red button. You know how it works. Hit subscribe and that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.